going to show you how to make the large surfing centre from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5 by 7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping and there are five hoopings, a selection of threads and if you're making yours reversible you will need a matching bobbin as well, some masking tape, T-pins, squizzers and my fabrics and batting cut to size. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below. If you would like to take part in our prize draw to win Creative Kiwi loyalty points to the value of this design, then just keep on watching as details will be given further on in the video. We're going to start off by hooping our wash away stabiliser. If you're using a magnetic hoop, place your two layers over the frame take the magnets for the top and bottom place your first magnet run it up the stabilizer and let it bite and then do the same at the bottom making sure that you keep your fingers right out of the way of the uh, magnets because they will hurt if they catch your fingers then you're going to do the same on the sides And your magnetic hoop is now ready to use. If you're using a traditional hoop, place your two layers of wash away stabilizer over the bottom frame, place your inner frame inside and then we're going to pin around the top edge of the hoop and this is important because it will stop your stabilizer from being pulled down between the two hoops pieces while it's stitching. So take your pin, rest it on the inside frame, push it through your stabilizer, bring it round and back through again and that will anchor it. You're going to do that on all four sides and the larger your hoop the more pins you will use. hoop is now ready to use. Load file 1 into your machine which is the lower half of the surfboard along with your thread colour for the surfboard and a matching bobbin if you're making it reversible. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 1 and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting and I'm going with green. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut any stitches. There are two ways to go about uh, making this segment. One is um, the regular method. You place your fabric back in front of the hoop, tape it in place, and then you stitch round number three. The other way is if you want to make your surfboard out of one piece of fabric, then we're going to Place our backing fabric, but you're going to make sure that all the excess, I'll turn that on its side so you can see, all the excess is at the top. So you want it by this straight, going over this straight line and minimal at the bottom there. And then you're going to tape it in place. We're going to turn the hoop over 
and do exactly the same on the front. You want to make sure that, that fabric's nice and taut so that when it stitches down you don't end up any with any wrinkles and then with the excess of the two parts we're just going to pop a little pin in and I'm going to place one here at the top to keep the fabrics nice and taut and this piece here I'm just going to roll up and hold it in place with a little bit of tape that stops it flopping around all over the place and getting caught underneath your hoop and being stitched down where it shouldn't be. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure everything in place. We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop if you've done reversible. However, if you're using the single piece, single fabric for the surfboard, you're not going to cut all the way around. And I'll show you. We're only going to cut up to this top stitch line here. So turn your hoop over, cut across, and then trim around the edge. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the front. And again, rather than carrying around and trimming off there, we're going to go straight across here. If you're doing your surfboard in two pieces, then yours will now look like this. So we're now going to pop our hoop into our machine making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching loaded into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to do the satin stitching around here and the surfboard detail. We're now going to free our work from the hoop if you're using a single piece of fabric for the surfboard you need to make sure that you're careful not to cut any of your fabric off when you free this from the hoop. So I'm going to start there, let me turn this over, I'm going to pull my two pieces of fabric right the way back out of the way and then I'm just going to trim along here on the back of the hoop. And then once that's done do that a little bit more. I'm going to pull them up out of the way. I'm just going to pop a little pin in there just to hold them and trim the rest. The rest. So now we've freed our work from the hoop, making sure that you've got the back facing upwards. So this is the front, that's the back. We're going to remove this piece of backing fabric because obviously we've got the stabilizer that's going to be in the way of the two. So we're just going to remove the backing fabric and I'm going to leave the front. Just cut along the stitch line, taking care not to cut anything else. So I've cut that really close and in our next hooping it will allow us to match up our fabric to 
the to the uh, hoop so now that we've got that and our backing fabric now that we've got our segment completed we can set our work aside for the minute we're now going to do the second hooping so hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer load file two into your machine which is the other half of the surfboard and Santa's hand along with your thread colour for the surfboard and matching bobbin of course if you're doing uh, reversible pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting place your batting over the outline and secure it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure it in place and it's also going to give you your placement outlines for your fabrics trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut your stitches If you're using a single fabric for the surfboard we're now going to place our um, first segment in position and what I'm going to do I've left the front of my fabric on I'm going to pull that back like that and like so and then I'm going to fold it back down so that I can clearly see the edges of my first segment and then I'm going to place this join, this seam if you like, on top of this outside stitch line. And I want to make sure that the um, outer stitch line here aligns with the centre of the satin stitching here. I'm not too worried about this side because there's going to be other segments added to that later on. So I'm going to concentrate on this side and place it down and when I'm happy with its position I'm then going to secure it and just to make doubly sure that it's not going to move I'm going to pop a pin in make sure that you keep your pins right out of the way of the stitch line so now when I pull that back that should all um, align nicely and then I'm going to secure this fabric in place and I want to make sure that the edges the sides are nice and taut so that they don't um, wrinkle when um, the stitching happens then I'm going to turn this over and we're going to place our backing fabric and we've got this nice um, angle where we cut off the fabric from the back so we can just align that and tape it in place you want to make sure that your fabric does creep across this um, bottom stitch line though so that uh, um, it secures when we do the next round of stitching so that's now ready to stitch round number three and that's going to secure our fabric in place if you're making your surfboard in two segments you don't need to worry about any joins for the minute all you're going to do is place your fabric for both front and back over the outline of segment two and stitch round number three to secure it in place
We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around where the hand fabric is going to be placed. So turn your hoop over and trim away, taking care not to cut your stitches. Do the same on the front. We're now going to place our fabrics for the hand, both front and back. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop, pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure them. You might want to change your thread color for your flesh colour here. I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to go with the green so you can see what I'm doing. Trim away the excess fabric from both front and back of your hoop. So turn your hoop over and take care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag around here and around the hand and then it's going to stop where you come to do your join if you're making your surfboard in two segments. So let's pretend for a minute that I haven't added segment one. You take your segment now, you place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here along the raw edge, align it, secure it in place and then we're going to stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag along here and join your first segment to this one. Making sure that you got your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching of the surfboard loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number seven and I'm staying with green. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching of the hand into your machine and then stitch round number eight and I'm going with flesh pink. We're now going to free our work from the hoop, so turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut your stitches or anything else underneath your hoop, trim around the edge. And before we go any further we're just going to trim up this raw edge, ready for joining later on. So cut close to the stitch line without cutting any of your stitches. And that's our second hooping completed and we can set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to do the third hooping, which is Santa's shorts and feet. So load file three into your machine. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer. 
pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline. I realise you can't see um, the stitch line very well at the moment but you will in a minute and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut any stitches. We're now going to place our fabric for the shorts over this area here. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Now do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Before we add our fabric for his legs, we're going to trim away the excess fabric from his shorts along this stitch line here. So turn your hoop over and cut along the edge, taking care not to cut your stitches. Do the same on the front. We're now going to place our fabric over the legs. So turn your hoop over and place your fabric over the outline and take it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure them. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop, taking care not to cut your stitches. So turn your hoop over. We're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag around here, here and here and it's going to stop where we come to do our join. We're now going to join the bottom half of the surfboard to this area here and you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where the zigzagging stops so I'm just going to turn that around so I can see what I'm doing and then secure it in place And if you're using pins, make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six. And that's going to zigzag along here and join the two pieces together. So 
check your join make sure that you're happy with it if you're not unpick the zigzag stitching reposition your surfboard secure it in place and then stitch round number six again if you are happy with it load your matching bobbin and thread color for the soles of his sandals into your machine and then stitch round number seven and I'm going with red load your flesh color for the legs into your machine and then stitch round number eight and I'm going with flesh pink load your matching bobbin and thread color for the top of his sandals into your machine and then stitch round number nine and I'm going with red load your matching bobbin and thread color for the satin stitching of the shorts into your machine and then stitch round number 10 and I'm going with white we're now going to free our work from the hoop so turn your hoop over and carefully cut around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches or anything else underneath your hoop just going to trim up along the raw edge here ready for our next join so cut close to the stitches without cutting them And that's our third hooping completed and we can set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to do the fourth hooping which is his torso. So hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as before. Load file four into your machine along with your neutral thread colour pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your batting and I'm going with red place your batting over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it that's also going to give you your placement outlines for your fabrics as well the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut your stitches place your fabric for his suit both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Trim away 
away the excess suit fabric from both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over Okay, so it's competition time. If you would like to win Creative Kiwi loyalty points to the value of this design, like, subscribe and share to support this channel and tell me where you would like to go as a destination holiday anywhere in the world for Christmas. This competition will close at 6 p.m. Central European time plus two on Sunday the 7th of July and a winner will be picked at random from all the valid entries. So be sure to check back and see if it's you. Good luck and thanks for taking part. We're now going to place the fabric for his hand over this area here. So turn your hoop over. Place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure them. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop from around the hand. So turn your hoop over. Next we're going to place our fabric for the belt, so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure them. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop around the belt, taking care not to cut any stitches. Next we're going to place our fabric for the belt buckle over this area here. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric down and tape it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure them. Next we're going to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the buckle and from the centre of the buckle. So turn your hoop over and 
cut away taking care not to cut your stitches Next we're going to place our fabric for the trim of Santa's suit. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure them. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop, taking care not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag all the raw edges and it's going to stop where we come to do our joins. We're now going to join our previous segments to this one and you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where the zigzagging stops and you might have to just pull your fabric to stretch it a tiny little bit because it relaxes once it's released from the hoop. And if like me you're using pins, make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line. I'm where there's a lot of fabric here and I've got nowhere to really put tape, I'm going to put a piece of sellotape just across there to hold it in place. And that way my uh, needle can stitch straight through it without any bother. And I'm going to do the same here just to hold that in place on the stitch line. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to zigzag along here and join all the segments together. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching of his suit into your machine. And then stitch round number 10. And I'm going with red. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the surfboard into your machine. And then stitch round number 11. And I'm going with green. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the tunic into your machine again and then stitch round number 12 and I'm going with red. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the trim of Santa's suit into your machine and then stitch round number 13 and I'm going with white.
load your matching bobbin and thread colour for his belt into your machine and then stitch round number 14 and I'm going with black load your matching bobbin and thread colour for his hand into your machine and then stitch round number 15 and I'm going with flesh pink Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the belt buckle into your machine and then stitch round number 16 and I'm going with gold. We can now free our work from the hoop so turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut any stitches or anything else underneath your hoop free your work And that's our fourth hooping completed and we can set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to do the fifth hooping. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser. Load file 5 into your machine which is the head along with your neutral thread colour. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to do the placement outline for your batting and I'm going with red if you're going to add a hanging ribbon now's the time to do it and you're going to place it on this guideline here and tape it in place then you're going to place your batting over the top and take that in place as well. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it and that's also going to give you your placement outlines for your fabrics. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches or your hanging loop. now going to place our fabric for the hat so turn your hoop over place your fabric over the outline for the hat and tape it in place do the same on the front Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Trim away the excess fabric from both front and back of the hoop, taking care not to cut your stitches or your hanger. And turn your hoop over.
We're now going to place our fabric for the face over this area here. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure them. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the white of the eyes into your machine and then stitch round number five and I'm going with white. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the colour of his eyes into your machine and then stitch round number six and I'm going with brown. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the black of the eyes into your machine and then stitch round number seven and I'm going with black. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the eyebrows into your machine and then stitch round number eight and I'm going with white. Trim away the excess fabric from around the face both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over. We're now going to place our fabric for the trim of the hat and the bobble. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and take it in place. Do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine to secure them. And I'm staying with the white. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch lines, taking care not to cut your stitches. So turn your hoop over. We're now going to place our fabric for the beard. So turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. We're now going to place our fabric for the front. Now on the front I'm using a faux fur, a long piled faux fur. If you're using a long piled fabric you're going to want to place a layer of Solvi topper over the top of your fabric so that your foot doesn't get caught into the pile and it keeps it all under control. So place your fabric in place, place your solvey topper over the top and tape it in place. Pop 
pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 10 to secure it. And I'm staying with the white. Trim away the excess fabric from around the stitch line of the beard, both back and front of your hoop. You want to leave your solvy topper in place. So turn your hoop over. load a neutral bobbin and thread colour into your machine and then stitch round number 11 and that's going to zigzag the raw edges and it will stop where we come to do our join and I'm going with white we now come to our join and you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here making sure that it's all aligned properly and secure it in place and if like me you're using pins make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line And just here to hold this nice and flat, I'm just going to put a little bit of sellotape across the join. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 12 and that's going to zigzag along here and join the segments together. Before you go any further, check your join, make sure that you're happy with it. If you're not, unpick the zigzag stitching, reposition your segment, secure it in place and then stitch round number 12 again. If you're happy with it, we're now going to stitch the mouth, so load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the mouth into your machine. And I'm going with flesh pink. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the hat into your machine and then stitch round number 14 and I'm going with red. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the beard and the trim of the hat into your machine and then stitch round number 15 and I'm going with white. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for his nose into your machine and then stitch round number 16 and I'm going with flesh pink. So that's the stitching finished. We can now free our work from the hoop. But before we do, I'm just going to pull that down there and stick it there so that I don't cut it off by accident when I'm freeing my work. So turn your hoop over, cut around the edge, taking care not to cut your stitches or anything else underneath your hoop. We're now going to remove all the excess stabilizer from around the edge of the joins and around the edges so take a cotton bud dip it in some warm water and just run it around the joins
and I'm just going to fluff up his beard a little bit and just around the edge I'll just put my scissors in closed and just wiggle the fur out of the um, satin stitching I've just got a little pet brush just to tidy him up. And that's our surfing Santa complete. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well. Take care and I'll see you next time.